Hi, my name is Mrs. McCrary, and this video is part five in the Unit 1 Scientific Foundations of Psychology video series. This video will cover ethics in psychological research. So to start with, ethics just refers to right and wrong. So psychologists want to make sure that their research is ethical or right or good. But finding out details about human behavior and the mind, um, some people might just question like what is morally okay to experiment on or what is ethical. And so there are ethical guidelines that are set in place by the psychological community. There are review boards that approve research before it's conducted, and these guidelines are just useful in helping to make sure that experimentation isn't harmful to participants. So there is an international review board, um, and this review board or the institutional review board, what it does is it's just an independent ethics committee. It's basically a group of people who review uh, research prior to conducting the, the researchers prior to conducting that research. And so this particular committee is um, basically going to approve, monitor, and just review biomedical and behavioral research that involves humans. There is a review board for animal research as well, but it's just really important so that research um, can be authentic, that it can be properly conducted, um, and that it's not harmful or causing any kind of distress or suffering to the participants. So what you need to know is you need to know the different types of guidelines that need to be followed in experimentation to make sure that it's ethical. So um, the guidelines that are really important to follow are one, being informed consent. And so informed consent is just that the participant needs to be able to choose whether they want to participate. So they need to be able to have that option that, that they are choosing to be involved. Now, there are situations like naturalistic observation where maybe they don't necessarily want the person to know that they're being, you know, that because it could affect how people behave. So if naturalistic observation is taking place, then it needs to take place in public so that people are going to places where they know they might be watched. But otherwise, participants need to give their consent. The second one is being protected from harm. And so whoever is participating needs to be able to, to have, um, be protected from emotional harm, physical harm, discomfort, and stress. And then also the information that's collected needs to be confidential. The people who are involved in the study need to know that their identities aren't going to be revealed through, that re through the publication of that research. Next is the participants need to be able to withdraw at any time. So it should be clear before the study and the instructions, it should be clear during the study that it is okay to exit the study or leave the study at any time. Even if the participant is getting some kind of comp compensation or payment, they need to know that it is okay for them to leave the study if they want to. Next is psychologists should minimize deception. So researchers should not use any kind of lying, um, half-truths. They shouldn't be trying to convince the participant of some kind of, you know, or using misinformation uh, unless it's absolutely necessary for that particular study. So minimize deception at, at, at all costs unless it's like the premise of that particular study. People also need to be debriefed, which basically just means that they need to sit down with the researchers or someone needs to sit down with them. And in some kind of interview or discussion, they need to get kind of an overview of why they were a part of the study, um, what the study findings are going to be used for. This is just a really important for them to understand the nature of what they were a part of. Um, they also will, that will reinforce and help them understand that they weren't harmed in the study. If there was deception in the study and that was a part of the study, they need to then be debriefed to understand um, what that was. That's really essential. If deception is used, that debriefing is so important to just talk through what happened. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, there is that pre-approval that needs to go through that institutional review board, the IRB. So that's really important too. Next is animal research. So animals are also used in psychological research. There are some situations where it just makes more sense to use animals. Um, also, 
humans, there are things that we just cannot test in humans. And so animal research just gives very valuable information. Um, and so psychologists can also use animals as participants, but there are ethical guidelines that go into animal research. And so when using animals as participants in studies, they need to be cared for with um, with care and in compliance with state regulations and federal regulations. It's also really important that the people who are handling the animals, that they're trained in how to do that or they have supervision for someone who is trained in those research methods and also handling of those, those animals in the maintenance of those animals as well. It's really, really important that the people who are working with animals, that they're also minimizing discomfort infection, illness, pain, and if any kind of procedures are done, um, surgical procedures, then they must use anesthesia. Um, they need to make sure that they're avoiding, you know, infection or pain after the surgery. So just uh, like humans, um, animals, they're also going to try to minimize all of the pain and discomfort. So this was a short video on ethics and psychological research. I hope it was helpful.